Welcome everybody to Scream Fortress 2022. Um, I'm doing this at the end of Scream Fortress because, you know, I really wanted to play all the new maps and really let everything sink in. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a real mixed bag. I unboxed some decent unusuals, played some great games, did some really funny stuff on all the new maps, but I figured why not rate them? This was a conversation my brother and I had way back in about, uh, I would say two weeks ago. We were driving back from the Rockies and we were talking about our, our TF2, like, weapons tier list, map tier list, Halloween weapon tier list, things like that, and I figured, no, this would be an awesome video. So, here we go, um, for what I'm going to do to grade things, there's going to be map theming, combat, gameplay, Halloween and spell effectiveness, i.e. is the theme it's trying to pull off effective and fun, and above all else, after game, if you get teleported to hell, things like that, or like the island in... Ghost Fort in Iodon. So, without further ado, let's just jump into it. Uh, first up, we've got Hellstone. Hellstone's a solid map. It is the uh, first map we have that is a Halloween payload map. I remember when this came out in 2015. Uh, I was still in high school when this came out, and I really enjoyed playing it. It has all three Halloween bosses on it, and it's nice and big and nice and long. <laughs> Take that as what you will. I really enjoyed it. Um, and the end point, I've had some super awesome holds, and I've had some super clutch caps with it. And if you're a sniper or an engineer or something defending, you just have this huge rooftop space that's excellent to hold on. And if you're attacking, you have this great, like, it's like an internal lumberyard base that you can capture and hold and defend within there. So it's a really, really good point of contention at the end. And on top of that, you have um the Miraz the Merasmus actually Merasmus doesn't spawn at all it's the eye of monoculus and the headless horseman head taker the the pumpkin guy i can't remember his full name because every time i do i i forget it but they spawn frequently and they're they're welcome bosses they don't interrupt the flow like some of the other maps on here so I, i'm gonna put this in a solid b tier it's pretty good um next up we have gravestone and this one was uh something i really didn't like and in terms of the way that the map is laid out, I, here's some things I do like. I really like the bumper car uh, challenge that you have at the end where you have to race up to the top. That's really fun, and I think it was something I was waiting for Valve to explore after Team Fortress uh, 2 2014 Halloween. It was excellent. And I think it was executed here really well in Gravestone, but the map of Gravestone is just really small in super close quarters. And normally, you'd think that's a good thing. I'm a pyro main, so a lot of people assume that stuff is just fun, but... It, what ends up happening is a lot of people play heavy or these other close quarters classes and it makes the map kind of turn into a real try hard fest and on top of that the uh the underworld just really isn't that enthralling it's just a quick walk to another door going through a coffin it's it's kind of underwhelming to me personally i've never had like a fun time on this map i've won on it a lot but i've never enjoyed myself playing it so with that i'm going to put it in d tier great ideas but it leaves a lot to be desired Next up is Ghoul Pit. This one was really cool, and I didn't actually know that a payload race map of, um, I believe this is Red Rock or Redstone, I can't remember, but it is, um, it's something I didn't think I needed in my life, but it's, it's pretty fun, and it still feels like you're playing, I think, is it Gravel Pit? No, it's not Gravel Pit. I can't remember the map, but I know it's one of the older ones. I know it's not Hoodoo. I think it's Gold Rush, actually. The map might be Gold Rush, but... In terms of Halloween, it's it's a very faithful recreation. Honestly, it feels like a Valve-made map, but they don't explore a lot with it. There's not a lot that changes on the map that makes the uh, the Halloween aspect of it really shine. You know, comparing, like, let's say, here's a good example, Man Manor versus Mountain Lab. Man Manor has an entirely different play style than Mountain Lab does, and that's what really sets it apart. So for Ghoul Pit, I think it's solid. I, I really like Halloween payload maps. They're super fun. I'm just going to stick it in C tier here. It's okay. Uh, it could be better. And we're moving on to Terror. Terror is solid. Um, a lot of the stuff within Terror is really, really pretty looking. I think UEAK Crash, the guy that made um, CP Glassworks, worked on Terror, and he did a fantastic job. I really enjoyed playing it. I played, I think, one map on it, but it was it was solid. I'm going to stick it up here with Hellstone. And uh, next up is my personal favorite. I remember back in 2013 when we got our um, Halloween update, it was just so much fun this this map i didn't have a concept of what high tower was at the time i was still very new i played tf2 for about 200 hours at the time and i played zero high tower so going into this it was just it was just fun i remember playing a lot of scout throwing the bat spell at people i still come back to this map and just 
love having a good time. I mean, it's Hightower with Halloween and spells, and it, it, it really takes the spell aspect of it and makes it shine. It, it's, it, it makes the, uh, the design of how the spells interact and the payload race work super well with each other versus some maps that are also spell-centric. I think Helltower really knocks it out of the park, and it's going to be our first S tier. Coming up next is Ghost Town MVM. I've actually done this once with uh, my friend from high school named Mixmaster Biden. He still plays Team Fortress 2, but we uh, we ended up getting a bunch of people together that Halloween. Like, I came up to him in high school, and I was like, hey, man, you want to try to do Wave 666? And he was like, I, I don't know. You think we're ready? And I'm like, I'm willing to try it. It's Halloween. So I went to his house. Uh, we brought our gaming laptops, and we sat down. Uh, his mom brought me and all of our friends. It was six of us. Uh, she brought down like a bowl of Halloween candy and he sat there and we were like strategizing and min-maxing how to make it past the first couple of waves and then it really was, it really gets tough about halfway through there but we managed to figure out a strategy with a pyro, a soldier, a demo, an engineer, a scout, and a heavy. We didn't really have a medic at all, we didn't really need one. Uh, and this was before we had the uh, projectile shield so we did all of that before it. It was very good. I don't know why it's really on here, uh, but it's 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 a solid map. I'm gonna put it in B tier. It's fun, but it's really, to be honest, it's not for the faint of heart. It's it's very difficult to play. But the Halloween version of it, which I believe is not Gold Rush, um, I can't remember the name of it from the MVM map. I don't play a lot of MVM, so I'm just gonna leave it in B tier. Up next is Cursed Cove. Cursed Cove is maybe my favorite theme in the entire game in terms of Halloween. You have undead pirates in a coastal city with a ghost ship coming up with player destruction those of you that don't know player destruction is when you uh kill somebody and you pick up the soul or the item it's like call of duty kill confirmed if you know what that is but instead of keeping it and adding it to your points you need to run to this point to bank the soul to score the points of your team and in cursed cove that comes in the form of a massive um galleon ship coming up from the sea and the map creators have a lot of custom sprites and design work here on the map that just it really takes your breath away in terms of design. I, I really enjoyed how it looks. And on top of that, the ghost ship looks excellent and Davy Jones Lockers, my favorite underworld part of the game. And the voice acting for Davy Jones is actually completely custom. I really enjoyed the map and I think it's a solid S tier. Next, we have Farmageddon. I really enjoyed Farmageddon from the one round I played. It has a great story, explaining about these mutant pumpkins, and each team has to get weed killer to kill the mutant pumpkin. It's a really fun, unique concept for player destruction. However, that's really it. It's just got this fun story going with it. Don't get me wrong, it's a great idea, and I really enjoyed the little story that came with the map, but in terms of player destruction maps, it doesn't go as far as it should. I love the branding, I love the marketing around it, and I like the control point, but it's just not enough for me, so it's gonna go in C tier. Doesn't really help no one plays it, so. Up next is Pit of Death. Pit of Death came out in the 2016 Halloween match when everyone kind of thought Valve was starting to abandon the game. A lot of people refer to this as the dark times of Team Fortress 2. And with Pit of Death, I really don't blame them. I, uh, I don't like this map. It's another player destruction map like Curse Cove, but it's done horribly. Instead of a point that moves across the map, it's very open in the center. And... It's just a lot of, um, it's, it's almost like playing on the sawmill point, where it's very open in that building, but it's the whole central cap point, and you have this smaller roofed building, and behind that you have an interior that is easy to navigate for both teams. It's a scout's paradise if you like playing scout, and a sniper's paradise if you like huge open um, areas to snipe from. But there's parts of the map I wish they capitalized on more. There's this little cliff sign underneath the building on the right side or the left side if you're playing red team where you have this full health kit and this little sewage runoff. And I think that was really cool. I wish we saw some kind of like cave system that bridged the area together to just really keep it from feeling so secular. And on top of that, going into the pit of death feels like a total chore because you're not even guaranteed to score going in there. It, it's kind of rough. Um, but it's good execution and pit of death kind of walked so Cursed Cove could run. So it's not bad, but I'm putting it, uh, I'm gonna put it in C tier near Farmageddon. It, it's got its problems, but it, it, the concept of it is solid. Next up is Bloodwater. Bloodwater is Badwater Basin's Halloween counterpart. And this is insane. This is such a cool map idea. Um, my issue is it's just Badwater with a new coat of paint. It doesn't really do anything different. 
which isn't a bad thing. If I already knew there's a map called Flooded Badwater, I played it when I played UGC Highlander, I think season 16. And it's got part of the map underwater. Like, when I say underwater, I mean a little bit like there's some like knee high water on it. It's super fun. And I really wish we got that of it, but it still shakes it up enough to, um, to play differently. Uh, my brother plays a lot of Sniper, and there's new sight lines on here that he discovered by using the jump spell. And it's pretty cool, and I've had some pretty clutch holds at the end, but really at the end of the day, it's just more Badwater Basin. So if you like Badwater, it's great for that. So up next we have Brimstone, and Brimstone is the Halloween version of Fifth Curve, which is a pretty solid map. It's got a lot of tight corners, uh, but in a good way. There's a lot of great ways to flank on it, and again, this falls into the Badwater Basin uh, Halloween map where it's just a Halloween version of something. There's not a lot that goes with it. There's a couple of new sightlines and a new area uh, set of rooms to flank in. But it's, it's, it's again, grossly inoffensive like Farmageddon where they don't do much with it. The only issue with this is that it's not like a Valve mid map. So I'm going to put it with Farmageddon. It's a solid map, though. I wouldn't be too mad if I was playing on it. I just wouldn't really want to really try on it too hard, I guess. Up next, we have Hassle Castle, which is my maybe my favorite version of the Halloween payload maps. I mean, it's payload upward, but as a castle. This really knocks it out of the park. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it does a lot to change it, especially the last point where you have a couple of different ways to reach that last area and disrupt or hold that engineer nest. It's excellent. And Upward's a very dry, dusty map, and seeing it with this cool Halloween aesthetic really just kind of contrasts with it very well. Um, it is just an, it's a similar issue with Badwater where it's just another Halloween reskin, but I think it's done a little bit more with Badwater where there's more going on with it instead of just one pool of blood on the third point. Hassle Castle really leans into the castle aspect with a lot of really great assets made from the ground up from the team. So that's going to go in A tier up here. Up next is Cauldron. Cauldron has a unique idea where every time you cap, the Cauldron spits out a random spell that does things. Whether it's spawning skeletons, giving you crits, or raining fire from the sky. It's pretty fun. Cauldron really reminds me of, uh, like, Glassworks from the Sixes pool of maps. I think it's still in there. But it, it, it's very similar to that. It's got a lot for everybody. Cauldron has areas for engineers to castle, snipers to snipe from, scouts to flank, and, you know, um, soldiers to do an entire full uh, rollout on. Skybox is pretty good. So I, I think it's it's good, and it takes a really unique idea from Koth, and it says, hey, let's take the stupid Marasmus spells where it freezes the game entirely and just applies them to you. You don't have to stop, it just continues. Now, it can be annoying when you get murdered by somebody who just got crits when you got crits, but hey, that's the price you gotta pay when you're playing Cauldron. I really enjoyed it. Up next is Precipice. It's a great map, but it's a forgettable map. Precipice is a payload map, and it's okay. There's not much going for it, except for Rockington. Love that guy. And I think that Precipice's biggest issue is that it doesn't have an underworld, and that most of it just feels like a generic Halloween payload map. Now, that's not a bad thing. If you're looking for a map that doesn't have a lot of random bullshit, Precipice is for you. It's nice and light on a lot of the Halloween aspects, with mostly crit pumpkins and explosive pumpkins. But despite that, with a lot of other Halloween payload maps, it's kind of the standard that there's a lot of random bullshit going on, and Precipice just doesn't have that, so it's going to go into the C tier. Up next we have Laughter. I've only played two rounds of Laughter for Contracts, and, you know, Laughter might be one of the most aesthetically pleasing maps in the entire uh, Halloween roster that we have here. It feels right at home with Pier or Sinshine. It just really exudes that carnival kind of feeling. But my issue with Laughter is that it feels like they built the map first and then they built or skinned it together with this carnival aesthetic. There's a tunnel of love in there, but it's just like a U-turn. Like it's it's just the shape of a U. You go in there and it's a flanking tunnel. It's, it's okay, but it doesn't really add much to it. It, it feels like I'm fighting in a like a like a carnival themed map versus fighting in a carnival. And we'll get to another carnival later. Um, but it, it's 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 not really it, here's the thing is the aesthetic of it is very memorable But the gameplay of it's kind of forgettable. I actually had to look up footage of me playing it to even remember what this map was And I was looking at it and I remember um, a Couple of the things I did but you know the spell aspect of it really shines on this map super well, too Where spells can kind of turn the tide of who controls the point and I think Halloween King of the Hill maps do a really good job at that so laughter 
you're a little bit better than some of the forgettables like Precipice, Farmageddon, and Brimstone, but you don't do anything new like Cauldron, so you're gonna go right behind Cauldron there. Up next is Monster Bash. Monster Bash takes the concept of uh, player destruction like in Pit of Death and Cursed Cove and makes it really fun where you're going around murdering everybody in a circular design of a mansion to construct what looks to be like some kind of monster in the center. Every 20 seconds you run in there, you make the monster, and usually you die trying to make the monster and banking the souls. But what's really fun about this is underneath of that big platform, you have this huge bottomless pit, and this is their underworld. You go through a castle with all of these traps and axes swinging from the ceilings, and it's really fun. It's like a miniature death run in the map. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, um, but at the same time, I think the map might be a little too small. Everything is very cramped together. You don't have a lot of time to like plan where you're going to set up if you're playing Engineer or have a lot of places to really flank, and if you do, it feels like you're chasing somebody in a circle. It's very memorable, the theming is super unique, and I really, really enjoyed the combat and the spell play here. It was really, really fun. So I'm going to put it above Laughter. It's just a little bit more memorable. And again, they're expanding super well on that player destruction concept. All right, next we have Harvest Event. Guys, it's Harvest Event. You already know this map is great. I'm putting it in S tier. Just Harvest Event is so much fun because it's, it's just Harvest with Halloween themes. It doesn't have to do more. It doesn't need any spells or underworlds. The map is perfect. It's a classic. Anyway, we're going to Los Muertos. And Los Muertos kind of took the memo of don't be a forgettable map personally. And this map is utterly gorgeous to play through. I would love to play it even if it wasn't Halloween themed. It feels like a perfect map for sixes or dare I say it even Highlander. It's it's excellent between the flower petals over to get the big spell book or the church or the way that sent the mid is designed where you have these multiple different areas to set up little sentries and the two huts across from each other. Just excellent. All, all around just solid map. I'm putting that in A tier. Next up is Maple Ridge Event, and honestly, this I think this map is slept on. Again, this came out in the 2016 run of maps, similar to um, Pit of Death, and I think it does it super well. Maple Ridge doesn't feel like a Halloween map. It, it, it kind of fits into the harvest aspect of it, where it doesn't have a lot of spookiness going on, but it's still very welcome. The crit pumpkins add a lot to the map, and that center point where you have these two long pipes to walk on to get up to the point on each side, and then a normal way to enter the point as well adds a lot to play with. And then, of course, I think it's a church or a farmstead in the center there. That's a great spot for engineers to set up or make a base. And, I mean, shit, it's even great to push through. It's it's a solid map with a lot to offer. I think it does fall into the, um, the pit of being very generic, though. I ask a lot of people about it, and they haven't played it, or they don't really know what it is, or they haven't remembered playing it. So, uh, it... To me, it's something I remember fondly, but I think that's just because of nostalgia, so I'm not going to let that tint my ranking of this map. But it's going to go up in C tier, I would say, above Ghoul Pit. It has a lot more going on in terms of um, the map design of Ghoul Pit. Next is Megalo. And Megalo is a really cool idea of a map where it's this big train station and the turnstile is the point. And occasionally a ghost train will speed through there, and there's three levels to the turnstile to cap it. It's a lot of fun. But it feels like there needs to be just a flanking route on the left side of blue and the right side of red because it's, it can become very one-sided very quickly at those spawn doors. And it kind of honestly sucks and it feels like it really hinders the map. The spells on this map are super solid and in bigger lobbies it's great to just launch fireballs across from the viewing platforms or sniping areas or set up sentry guns to oversee the point. It's a lot of fun and I've died a lot trying to cap the point with the train and I've seen a lot of people get mogged by the train. But it takes a risk, and it's a, it's a very unique idea on King of the Hill where the point rotates vertically. Where the point, it, it stays in the same spot, just different altitude. I really, really enjoyed it. But at the same time, I feel like it has a lot going on and it's not properly ironed out. I'm going to put it right under laughter. At a quick glance, Mulder Grove might look like a ripoff of Iaduct or Viaduct, and the spawn rims even feel like it in the entry to spawn, but... It's actually a very small, compact map with a lot going on. Some great skirmishes for um, MGE classes like Scout and Soldier, but it doesn't have a lot to offer, and it can become pretty one-sided pretty quick. There's only, I think, three different lanes that red and blue can come from to get to the center of the point. Health packs are a little bit sparse on the map, 
and I don't think it adds a lot in terms of the Koth design, especially when you look at maps like Megalo or Los Muertos or even Harvest where you have a ghost. It just it feels painfully average. Um, so I'm going to put it with Farmageddon here. I played a couple games on it. It wasn't too bad, but it, it definitely felt like they were trying to go with Viaduct vibes or Iaduct vibes in terms of how it's set up. Up next, we have Moonshine Event, and I love Moonshine. Moonshine's a freaking awesome map, dude. It's so much fun. And then the Halloween version of Moonshine's even better. And I argue this has some of the most fun ways to use the spells that Valve introduced in the game. And on top of that, the point to cap, making it this little house on the bayou, is solid. There's a lot of great ways to approach the house from rockets or bridges or even from the water below. And for snipers, dude, it doesn't get better than this. You guys have these tiny little um, power generator like style houses across, right across from each other. And then for spies, there's a lot of great ways to flank. Pyros, dude, pyro shark all day. Heavies, super easy way to cap onto the point and push through. And soldiers, there's a lot of great rollouts you can do to get to the point. And engineers, I've seen people literally castle up in there, no problem. What I really like about it is the point isn't just this building on the water. They have this... Uh, they have a couple of like uh, lumber piles there where you can put stuff on and they also have a patio which allows you to access the building from the water and put sentry guns and things like that on there that's also where the point is and it is in my opinion perfection it's it's an excellent halloween map and honestly i think it's slept on i'm putting it in a tier up next we have soul mill i was a little worried when i saw this map and logged in for the first time but you know I, the, the unique thing about Sawmill is the saws, and I think Sawmill does a great job Halloweenifying that. That's the new term. We're going to make that a thing. Um, where players, they when they touch it, they get spooked. So it's a super easy way to just totally take somebody out of play if you're playing Pyro and launch them onto the saw and freak them the fuck out and your team will kill them. And on top of that, the effects and the map design just look really beautiful. Like, wow, I was blown away when I saw those spectral green saws. They just, they looked so good. And the underworld part of Soul Mill is just excellent. It's so pretty, and there's just so many places to go to. It feels like something out of Hellraiser with all the chains everywhere and the saws. It's great, man. There's a lot of health there, so you don't die on the way up to, to escape. There's a lot of ways to move around and do it. And on top of that, you're playing King of the Hill Saw Mill, but with a Halloween twist. It can't get any better than that. Spells interact pretty okay on here. But I think the real star of the show is that midpoint where those saws are a huge variable for players. So we're going to put that in A tier. It, it just takes the map and improves upon it. Up next is Slasher. Slasher is similar to Los Muertos and similar to Laughter, but kind of like a hybrid. Slasher knew it wanted to be a Koth map, but they didn't know what kind of theme they wanted to have. And instead with this is they made the map and then they made the theme around it, it feels like. But it works better here because it's very open. The center point is under a, looks like a gazebo of some kind, and right behind that you have this cool little cave that goes into like a dimension of hell, and that stays open the entire time you play, which is great, or terrible. A lot of the times, the strategies I see is get an engineer, have him set up near that dimension, and keep sending people through to just keep farming the big soul book so you can get some OP spells and cap the point. Other than that, it's got some great sight lines like Ghost Fort for sniping, some super solid flank routes for Pyro and Spy and everybody else, excellent rollouts for Demo, great places for Engineers to castle up, and a Heavy can just chew through everybody on this map, dude. It's fantastic, it's a ton of fun, but if I had to pick between Slasher, Soul Mill, and Moonshine, I'd probably pick Moonshine and Soul Mill. I'm going to put Slasher as the best of the B tier. It's excellent, and in a pin, and not in a pinch, but if, if it's there, I'll be like, yeah, let's play it, but given the option... I probably wouldn't play uh, play it if I had Soul Mill on the table with it. And this is usually how I do my tier list. I compare it to the tier above it. Does it pass this tier? Yes or no? Up next, we have Synthetic, which is a Halloween version of Synthetic, which is Sin with a Y, not an I. And this map is really cool because the story behind it is the mercs are fighting over a manor owned by... I forget her name. I can't remember. But it uh, the, the owner of the manor, the previous owner, is reincarnated as the Skeleton King. And he stomps around the map and this is a very rare thing to see when the only time i've also seen something like this is in los muertos where you have the the green skeletons pop up and harass the players and the skeleton skeleton king here actually has a special model on him he's a little bit modified and it's generally just a lot of fun and very visually interesting and the the capping point 
kind of reminds me of metalworks and steel put together where you have metalworks is um like balconies and bridges combined with steels like raised central points it's super fun to fight over and if you're a demo or soldier this is a dream map dude it's fantastic for everything i really really enjoyed my time playing on it and on top of that just the amount of work and extra custom textures put in here really kind of push it beyond and make it a very interesting map to me i'm gonna put it in a tier it was super solid up next we have sunshine sunshine is a halloween version of sunshine and i really liked sunshine it looked really fun to play initially and it was something we don't see a lot in tf2 which is tropical coastal maps i loved the lighthouses on that and fortunately for me those are all still here but with a lake of magma when sunshine came out in 2015 i was very pleasantly surprised to even see it come into the rotation if you like control points and stalemate -y maps and holding out to the last man on last or pushing in and reverse sweeping sunshine is for you it's excellent the spells here play pretty all right the underworld is okay but really what you're playing it for is the redesigned version of sunshine and however similar to bloodwater it is that it's just a redesigned version of sunshine now that being said if you uh, if you're a sixes player or a highlander player and you want to play your rollouts or you want to play a super balanced control point map this is the map for you it's very solid and it's a very very unique take on the sunshine and the control point formula for halloween which we don't have a lot of surprisingly anyway up next is crasher crasher came out this year and i have got to say this might be maybe my favorite game mode ever so crasher focuses on one of your members becoming a giant with permanent crits and really handicapped movement speed with increased health and your goal is to escort that giant with the bomb to break open the gates of a castle and destroy the castle each team has these giants and they must fight random players can become the giants and fight now there's a meta to this there's some people that say sniper's the best pyro's excellent the heavy's the best you know it doesn't really matter sometimes the game can get really long and kind of stalemate -y, but that's really the only complaint i have the map design is perfect there's these great underways next to the river of the center part of the map to go through as a normal player and you have these little it's i would call it like barracks or smaller buildings in the center like bridge line of the map where you have this small bridge and then you have these two adjoining buildings each across the other side which are great for sentry nests sniping really everything it's just fantastic and as a giant the map does a good job at showing you where you need to go and where it might be best to go my first time playing through it i did pretty well but i got i got stuck at the bridge and realized i was too chunky to fit through this underpass so with that i mean that was that was the only time i had an issue learning with it but overall they took a brand new concept to Scream Fortress and made it something completely unique on its own. And I just had a ton of fun doing it. On top of that, there's custom animations, custom voice actors that come in and do their work here, and some super nice textures and models. I highly recommend you play this map like right now. Like close the video and play it right now. It's that much fun. Um, so with that in mind, I'm putting it above synthetic and soul mill. A little bit above Moonshine. Actually, about on, on par with Hassle Castle. They're both super fun. And it's it's just a ton of fun because it's like Juggernaut from Halo, if you've ever played Juggernaut. Or like team, um, like PvP team-based uh, versus Saxton Hale. It's awesome. Alright, up next we have Iaduct. One of the OGs. Iaduct does a lot right. One, they took a map that was really balanced competitively and casually with a lot of unique plays for players and a lot of casual ways to play too. The, the um, bridges across that central building are perfect, the ridge is excellent, and Monoculus isn't too oppressive uh, uh, when he spawns. Unlike another map we'll get to. And Monoculus can be taken out with the team pretty easily, He's not, he doesn't have a massive move pool, all he does is just shoot rockets. And going into the underworld to get crits and stun him is a unique concept, and when he finally dies and the truce is over, it's game on, and it's just Halloween hell on viaduct and it's a ton of fun you got your crit pumpkins you got your explosive pumpkins it's fantastic it's a solid map i think it's definitely better than moonshine and los muertos it's just a classic man you know you all know it was coming ghost fort i'm sure if you've played back before 2014 like me you had a lot of really fond memories with this map fighting Marasmus, getting onto the point getting up to that sneaky spot right above the point as an engineer and just holding that, or putting your sentries on those super tall wooden palisades. 
Super, super fun stuff. I mean, it's Lakeside. Lakeside's a solid map, right? How do you ruin something so beloved like that? Well, it's not too difficult. All you really have to do is make Merasmus spawn every um, five seconds after the point is capped with a 50-50 chance. Making your average 7 to 12 minute game of Ghost for it go into a 37 minute slog where each team wants to cap, wants to win. But Merasmus just keeps showing up until eventually one side just throws in the towel and says, fuck it, I'm done my contract, I don't care anymore. And on top of that, it becomes obscenely toxic when there is the truce. I've seen multiple games and different people in different games go engineer, build a level 3 nest right outside of my spawn door, wait until the um, truce ends, and then just play and um, annihilate anybody else that comes out of there. Luckily, these can be countered, but it's still a huge pain in the ass, and I, I think the update in 2014 where they made the truce, and also patched in how often Merasmus spawns, really kind of hindered this map, and they have yet to fix it still. It's a real slog to play through, and it really just makes one of my favorite Halloween maps not fun to play. I'm putting it down here as the worst map so far. It just It's a fall from grace, man, and it's just, uh, just go play Lakeside or Harvest Event or e even, even Iaduct at that point. Up next, we have Bonesaw, and Bonesaw is a visually beautiful map where the forest is on fire and both sides are working and competing to push one of their bro one of their bosses into hell. Again, similar to Hell Tower, but this time added with some really unique flair. It's kind of like uh, those other payload race maps that you play. I can't be, be bothered to come up with the names or remember because they're just that insignificant to me. I can barely remember what they're called. I think one's called Pipeline. But it feels like they took Pipeline and the other one, and, <laughs> the other one, and spun them together and added in a custom Headless Horseman model and a payload cart that actually slices you up. They took the saws from Sawmill and put them on the cart. So when you're pushing this thing, if you get close to the front, you're nicked. You're dead. It's over. And on top of that, the map is visually just so beautiful. It's so cool running through this ember burned forest and these buildings that are on fire to fight and push this dead guy up to the grave of the other dead guy to desecrate it and then get sent to hell and the afterlife part of this map where you're in the underworld is a death run mini game for the whole server where you have to jump from stump to stump or walk from stump to stump with small bridges avoiding saws and traps i think whoever made soul mill made this map too because it has a few of the similar elements including some wood textures and the saws make a return especially in the underworld with those ghostly saws it's an excellent map i recommend it a lot i think it's on it's the s tier and it's an yet yeah, another payload race map in s tier i'm not surprised either guys up next we have man manor which is another classic this map is super in my opinion super slept on it's super super fun I already really liked Mountain Lab as a concept. I've had some super clutch last holds on there as engineer, or just working with my team to hold last point, or even first. And I've also been on the other end where we've had to push through and finally get to that last choke point. And Man Manor does that in spades where they add the Headless Horseman. This is their first debut of him, and he can be a nuisance to some people if you aren't prepared, but if you know how he works, he's a ton of fun. Side note, I've never gotten the Haunted Unusual Scrap until now. Now that I have it, I uh, don't know if I really want to make the make the head taker. I mean, it looks cool, but it's not really for me. But the way that Man Manor is laid out, it feels very much like a manor. You can barely, you can tell it's kind of like Mountain Lab, but that upstairs point right above Mountain Lab is just so much different in Man Manor, where the, the ceiling is like crumbled away. It's super interesting. I really had a lot of fun playing it, and I highly recommend you guys to do too. The contracts on it aren't super egregious, and it's super easy to play. And on top of that, it's just a ton of fun, no matter your play style. Go play it right now, guys. This is this is another A-tier map. I'm putting it near Iaduct. Up next, we have Carnival of Carnage. Carnival of Carnage came out in a weird time where Valve was kind of mad at the community of TF2 for idling for presents. And everyone all kind of like gather, like collected together and thought, what are we going to get for Halloween for 2014? I don't know. Rumors came around that it was going to be maybe a Halloween Frontier map, and some people thought it would be Doomsday. It turns out it was Doomsday, and what we got was a, a visually interesting, uh, certified spooky version of Doomsday. Now, what makes this map unique is the massive smashing hammer near the, uh, the ticket lift, but 
It doesn't really feel like a carnival compared to uh, laughter. Laughter is, feels like more like a carnival than uh, Carnival of Carnage does. I mean, there's no rides. You can just see like where these attractions are. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not good. Some saving graces for this map definitely are the uh, Necro Smasher and the ways that Marasmus shakes up the map where you'll be swimming in like literal Jurati fighting people or no gravity or tiny heads or all melee. It's super, super fun. And then on top of that, you have the bumper cars mode with all of those bonus ducks that you have to catch. There's three different game modes with it and all of them are really fun. And I think this might be one of the best executed bumper car uses ever, aside from maybe gravel stones or gravestones one. I mean, it's just solid. I don't think it's as good as, uh, say, Iaduct, but it's definitely better than uh, some of the others. I'm putting in an A tier. I'm not mad when I play on it. It's just a solid map, and I'm not going to be upset playing it either. I, I enjoy playing it, but, you know, I think there could be some stuff that Valve could patch up and fix on it. But again, the spells make a return here, and they're actually pretty solid. Up next, we have Graveyard. Graveyard is interesting, to say the least. I mean, it falls into those maps of... Uh, this is just Scream Fortress filler, because we have to have it. So, I mean... Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I really have to say on Graveyard, man. It's just pretty forgettable. Last three. So we've got Erebus. Erebus is really interesting with the way that the map is themed. With this super cool... um, It's a mining town with magma all around it and kind of like a volcano erupting. I was never really sure, but... It brings in the element of magma and fire, which I haven't seen since Sinshine and Hellstone. Way, way, way back. It was really, really interesting to play, but it's an attack and defend mode for Halloween, so take that with what you may. Those are okay. I mean, we this was, I think, the first time we've had one. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. It's uh, it's it's serviceable. I think the idea is better than, uh, say, like, Laughter and Megalo. Um, it works pretty well. I just think that uh, it's, it's a tad bit generic, but the map is just so fun to play. Up next, we have Gorge Event. Gorge Event's really cool, too. Because with Gorge Event, you have a third entire, like, roof open up in front of the first point for attack and defend. Actually, I think this was the first attack and defend Halloween map. But the issue with that is that it is Gorge. And if you've played Gorge, you know how stalemate it can be, and not in a good way. In fact, you're in a bunch of Halloween bombs and crits and shit like that. You're not really in for a good time. Not really in for a bad time. I'll play Gorge, but it's I'd, I'd rather play Gorge over Pit of Death. But Brimstone's fine. And finally, we have Spooky Ridge. Yep, I just double-checked, and Spooky Ridge did come out this year. I wanted to make sure. Funnily enough, I actually unboxed it unusual on this map. It's pretty fun. Oh, I really like that last point where it hangs over this massive hole in the ground. And the teleportation aspect of it's really interesting. The Iron Maidens are pretty funny. I've seen people stray too close to them and get killed and turn into a tiny skeleton. But most of the time I play it, I feel like it's a roll, usually on the attacker side. I think a third point on here would be enough to kind of ease up the tension of spooky ridge but uh yeah in terms of the last map here this one's fine i i think it could it suffers a lot from just like attack rolling it super hard or defense like really locking it down don't get me wrong you can have some great moments on this map but by and large i would rather play something else i'm gonna put spooky ridge next to graveyard it's a good map but i think it could be explored better so these are all of the halloween maps ranked from best to worst Tell me what your favorite map is in the comments below, or tell me, is my list wrong? I mean, it probably is to a lot of people, so that's okay. But tell me your list down below. I'm excited to see what you...